a family ride, a slipline tonic, and a mountain retreat. These are just some of the prizes that can be won in this week's edition of 321. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your host, Ted Rogers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hang on, what a lovely burst of applause. Steve Cram could have run a mile in that time. <laughs> but welcome, everybody, as always, to 3, 2, 1. And children at home, please don't try and copy what I do. Because I've had a letter from a farmer, and he says his children help him with the milking. And ever since they've been doing this, the cows have given nothing but yogurt. <laughs> and the bulls are not too happy either. But anyway, we do welcome you once again, as always, 2, 3, 2, 1. At home, we want you to sit there, try and answer the questions, work out our clues, which can be a little devious, you know that. Dusty Bin is, of course, hanging around every corner here, hoping to send one of our couples home with just a copy of himself and a brand new dustbin. But without him and without our contestants, we couldn't do our show. Make them feel at home right now. Here they are. <laughs> and there he is. Dusty Bin, of course, already waiting to send one of our couples off at the end of the quiz with just a ceramic copy of himself. And remember, if he's one at the end of the show, all our contestants take home is a brand new bin. That's all they get, so off you go, Dusty. Let's find out who our contestants are from Linda Lee Lewis. Linda. How are you? Good to see you. How's it going? Have a good week. A smashing week, can you? Not bad, not bad. Working hard as always. Good. Who do we have tonight? Right, we have Harvey and Jackie Kent from Margate in Kent, Tony and Margaret McGoldrick from Greenock in Scotland, and Mike and Audrey Leonard from Boban in Durham. There you go. Thank you very much. Thanks, Linda. Thank you very much. Bowburn, that is Bowburn. I said that right, did we? That's right. Yeah, it's good. And, and how do you earn your living, Mike? What do you do? I'm a leading ambulance man. Oh, are you? Do you do things like mouth to mouth resuscitation and stuff like that? Yes, that's an essential uh, part of our job. Yeah, have you actually done that? Yes, yes, I'm permanent mm. emergency work, so it crops up quite often. Well, I'd hate to do mouth to mouth resuscitation, would you? I'd probably get Ian Paisley and fall in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Audrey, are you a working lady? Yes, I'm a part time sales assistant. And what sort of hobbies do you have? Um, I like to play squash, but yes? uh, can't get my clay. Mm -hmm. It's too dangerous. What do you mean? Hey? It's it's too too dangerous. Dangerous. What a squash? Oh, aye. Why? What happened? Well, I once uh, hit my opponent across the face with the racket. Accidental, of course. <laughs> Your opponent? It wasn't Mike, of no. course. No. Oh, oh, well, that's why I won't go. Oh. She won the match. <laughs> <laughs> I should think she did. <laughs> Send for another ambulance man. Anyway, <laughs> good that you're here. Couple number two are Tony and Margaret McGoldrick from Grenock in Scotland. And uh, Tony, I believe you're a catering lecturer. And what does that entail exactly? What do you do? Well, I teach catering subjects ranging from degree right through to law mm -hmm. to a wide range of students. And what about your hobbies? What do you do? What do you um, do? Basically, when I have time, I collect toy cars. Yeah? yeah How many do you have? Um, nearly a thousand. Really? Nearly a thousand. Yeah, some kind of hobby. And Margaret, do you work at all? Yes, I work part time in a disco. Uh huh. Have you been there long? Uh, no, not long. Oh, I see. And do you have children, yes? Yes, three. Good, good, good for you. Glad you're here with us. And couple number three are Harvey and Jackie Kemp from Margate and Kemp. And I see it. Harvey, you're ex-merchant navy, yes? Yes. Now you're electronics doing exactly what? Um, we supply electronics to the shipping industry. Uh-huh. And your hobbies? Uh, doing up our old house. Do it yourself, eh? Yep, do it myself. How are things well, going? All right. Well, uh, it did go quite well until, until I took a basin out of one of the upstairs room and I flooded that bedroom and then the room below as well, so <laughs> it didn't go too well. And how about you, Jackie? Apart from mopping up, what do you do? <laughs> I'm secretary to the general manager of a hotel. Hotel? Hotel chain, is it? Yes. Don't let him pull the chain, you flood the place. <laughs> <laughs> how did the two of you meet then? I mean, how did that come about? Um, on a holiday in Corfu, 18 to 30 holiday. 18 to 30 holiday? I've always fancied one of those, you know, I tried to apply, but I was turned down, not because of my age. I failed the medical. Anyway, <laughs> glad that you're all here. You know we're going to start the quiz, and we always, of course, give you £10 to start the quiz, OK? Now, you get £10 for each correct answer in the first round. Whatever you win at the end of the first round is what you get for each correct answer in the second round. And so, theoretically, if one couple was lucky enough to score two maximums, they could go home with £1,650 from the quiz alone, all right? General knowledge questions on the buzzer. When you think you know the answer, hit the buzzer. Please wait until I say your name and you have three seconds to come up with the answer. If you fail to do so, I will then say on offer. The other two couples have a chance to go for the question, but again, wait until I say your name. If they're wrong, that couple will go in the question. It, that question will go into the bin, but I want ten correct answers in the first round. Here we go. According to the song, which bird sang in Berkeley Square? Mike and Audrey. Nightingale. Nightingale is correct, yes. <laughs> That's got us off. Now then, what is the colour of the live wire in the flex to the plug in modern electric wiring? 
Tony and Margaret. Right. Brown is right, yes. <laughs> now, in the Magic Roundabout Children's Program, who always bounced in at the end and said, oh, Tony and Margaret? Zebedee. Zebedee did, yes. I would have accepted Joan Collins, but don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> How many sides has a hexagon? Harvey and Jackie. Seven. That's wrong. So it's on offer, Tony and Margaret. Six. Six is correct. Which country does the duck-billed platypus come from? Harvey and Jackie. Australia. Australia's right. And there's another Australian bird that does a lot of pecking down under. That's Rod Holzini, of course. <laughs> Name the Indian Prime Minister who was assassinated. Ah, you've anticipated it. OK, who is it? Gandhi. Ah, yes, Gandhi. Indira Gandhi. You anticipated just about right. Assassinated in 1984, of course. Which royal wedding took place in this country in 1947? Mike and Audrey. Three seconds, I can say, on offer to the other two couples. Tony and Margaret? The Queen and Prince Philip. The Queen and Prince Philip is right, yes. Which fictional character is nicknamed the Cape Crusader? Tony and Margaret. Batman. Batman, of course. First Australian cricketer, cricketer to be knighted was born in 1908. All right, you've anticipated how. Really. Donald Bradman. Donald Bradman, the great Sir Don Bradman. What building in Paris was stormed on July the 14th? You've anticipated Tony and Margaret. The Bastille. The Bastille is right, yes. Ah, that is our tenth question. So at the end of our first round, we have Mike and Audrey on 20 pounds, Harvey and Jackie on 40 pounds. In the lead at the moment, Tony and Margaret, 70 pounds they've got. Oh. <laughs> okay, just sit back and relax now because it's time to meet our newcomer to 321 this week. It's the turn of a young 19-year-old lass who's already done very well in the West End of London in shows like 42nd Street. At the moment, she's playing Jemima in that great show, Cats. Tonight, she has a great dance routine being choreographed by Gillian Gregory from that American show, The Tap Dance Kid. Please welcome Nikki Belcher. Five, four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 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 ten,
Natasha, 19 years of age. Wonderful. OK, folks, second round of our quiz. Now then, Mike and Audrey get £20 for each correct answer this time. Harvey and Jackie get £40. Tony and Margaret, £70 for each correct answer you get this time. Same as before, 15 questions this time. Unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to the couple with the lowest amount of money at the end of the quiz. Same procedure, hand on that buzzer, wait until I say your name. Good luck. Here we go. Who had a number one hit in this country in 1971 with Wooden Heart? Tony and Margaret. Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley is correct. What sign of the zodiac covers the last week of November and most of December? Tony and Margaret? Sagittarius. Is correct, yes. What name is given to the spooky parties for children held on October the 31st? That's Harvey and Jackie. Halloween. Halloween is right, yes. Ghosts, I don't know, they're weird. I know a place, you know, where there's a ghost of a wrestler walks around with somebody else's head under his arm. <laughs> who starred as the punctilious headmaster who ran his life by a clock in clockwise? Tony and Margaret. John Cleese. John Cleese is correct. What nuts do give the distinctive flavour to the sponge filling of the traditional Bakewell tart? Tony and Margaret? Almond. Almonds is right. What figure forms the shape of the traditional Toby jug? What? Mike and Audrey. Uh, a face. A body. A body of what? Yes. Uh, a, 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 a man in a tricorn hat. Ah, well, I accept that. A man <laughs> in a tricorn. It's a very difficult one to accept, but OK, yes, we will accept that. Fair enough. What nickname was given to Mary the First, Queen of England, during whose reign you've anticipated Tony and Margaret? Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary is right. That's right. We, many Protestants would have burned at the stake. That's why they call her that. <laughs> what do the Americans call a dinner jacket? Harvey and Jackie. Tuxedo. A tuxedo is right. According to the proverb, what does the early bird catch? Oh, Tony and Margaret? The worm. The worm. <laughs> the worm. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. What is the name of the Lord who is the key character in Dorothy L. Sayers' detective novels? Mike and Audrey? Peter Whimsey. Lord Peter Whimsey is right. In the world of computers, what is the usual name for the programming language which is the beginner's all-purpose symbolic... <coughs> You've anticipated, Mike? Basic. Basic is right, yes. What is the only place in Europe where the Barbary ape lives in freedom? Mike and Audrey? Gibraltar. Gibraltar is right. Whereabouts in the human body is the patella? That's Tony and Margaret. The leg. Uh, well, the knee. sorry, yes, you did. I didn't quite hear the knee. You said yes. Okay, yes, we will accept that. But fancy calling your knee the patella. <laughs> We'd all be singing patellas up, Mother Brown. <laughs> if the solstice occurs in June and December, what occurs in March and September? If the solstice occurs in June and December, what occurs in March and September? Solstice. Nobody? No, that's equinox. OK, here's your last question. What is the title of the TV series starring Richard O'Sullivan about a father and his daughter? Tony and Margaret? Me and my girl. Me and my girl is absolutely right. And that's the end of our quiz this week. And we have Mike and Audrey on £100, Harvey and Jackie 120 But the winners of our quiz this week, Tony and Margaret, £630 they've got. <laughs> well done. That's very good, and we have to say goodbye, unfortunately, to Mike and Audrey here on 100 quid. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There you are, just 20 quid away from getting through into part two of the show, but it's been smashing having you with us. Have you enjoyed it so far? Great. Sit yeah, back and enjoy the rest day. of the show. Thanks a lot for coming Thank along. You. Love Thank to you. everybody at home. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're going to see you in just a couple of minutes on 3, 2, 1. Don't go too far away. Yeah. <laughs> that was close. the show we've got Tony and Margaret who are from Greenock in Scotland playing against Harvey and Jackie who are from Margate in Kent. Now folks you know what's going to happen here we're going to show you three acts at the end of each one of them one of our guests will come here to the table leave you a clue object read a rhyme when there are three here on the table you choose one to reject if you are the couple who gets through our elimination question so good luck to you and we're going to go on and have act number one you know a couple of years ago on 321 I had the pleasure of introducing our next act and they really are different a really musical treat in every way here tonight with Odyssea will you please welcome back Ron Rondo Veneziano.
lovely. It's a lovely sound, that. And I got Rondo Veneziano right, but I didn't get Odyssea right, did I? No, you didn't. Did I get it right that you time? You got it right that time. Thank yes. you. Well, two times out of three is not too bad, or one out of two. OK, hey, so what are you leaving us with a clue here? I have a box of tearaways for box you. Box of tearaways, the clue. And the rhyme says what? The rhyme says, they both sure can go, of each could be said, but the family model is just ahead. There you are. That's the very first one tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Kate and Rondo Veliziano. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Now then, yes, not much is going on here. It's a bit too early, isn't it, <laughs> folks? Would you say? Yes, definitely. Yes, yeah. yeah, a bit too early. Box of yeah. tissues to cry with. Yes, indeed. You mean Dusty Bin? That's it. Just keep thinking about Dusty Bin. We're going to have act number two. And here are two very bright young ladies. You've seen them many times on television, on all sorts of shows. But tonight, they've teamed up especially for us. They have a comedy sketch we're not going to like. It's called Americans. Please welcome the Flaming Hamsters. long way back now. We were cheerleaders together. Oh my god, Amanda! It's me! It's you! It's you! It's me! Hi! Ma! Oh. Gosh, haven't you changed? Well, only my physical attributes. Yes, you have a new chest. Do you like it? I got it as a part settlement on my third divorce. Oh, it's beautiful, baby. Is it a Saint Laurent? No, they're Armani. Uh -huh. I was gonna get a Saint Laurent, but I didn't like their offer. What was that? Have two done and get one free. <laughs> <laughs> still, you have a waist now. Oh, yeah, but it's only temporary. I'm still waiting for one without the belly button. They're so gross, don't you think? Absolutely. You're looking so good. Can I hold you? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Amanda? Yes? I can't help noticing your mouth. It's so bow. Where did you get it? I won it in a tombola. I'm still having a few difficulties with the vowel sounds, mm -hmm. though, but it should be okay after 2,000 words. <laughs> what about you? Your nose. Huh. Don't talk to me about nose jobs. Oh, I know. You've got to be so careful with them. You know, after I had my last nose job, I had a good blow. And guess what I saw in my hanky when I'd finished? I don't know. My nose. No. <laughs> yep, it came right off. I wanted to cry. Well, why didn't you? Well, I couldn't sniffle, could I? <laughs> Amanda, do you have a cigarette? Of course. You know, Amanda, I think it's a sin the way some people abuse the bodies God gave them. Mm. <laughs> it sounds as though, Patty, you might have religion. Well, yep, so I have. And you know, when God calls you, you know he's talking just to you. It's a very personal, very individual experience. Yes, I know what you mean about looking after your body. It's just so difficult right now, what with all the junk food and the smog. Oh, I know. All that pollution coming into your system. <laughs> Oh, my God! What? A hair! Where? On your leg! Oh, my God, it's not even part! Oh, no, just when I thought I was nearly finished as well. Oh, Patty, do not look so distressed. You are causing two wrinkles on your forehead. That's impossible. I had my forehead removed two years ago. Well, whatever they replaced it with, it is creasing up. I know you're only 24, but you look at least 25. <sighs> Amanda, Amanda, relax. Relax. Remember? Oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> Beauty is in the eye of the plastic surgeon. Yep. There they are. Anne and Sarah, lovely. Hello. Not yet. Listen, your actress is obviously. Yeah. And how long have you two been together anyway? Oh, um, three years. Three years. Three years, yes. Because yes. yes. I've seen you on the Rory Bremner show, yeah. yeah. Do you yes. enjoy doing that? Yes. And do you do cabaret as well? Yes. There you are. And after yes. the night, pantomime, who knows? Yes. What are you going to leave them here as the clue? A farmhouse loaf. All right, that's the clue this time. And the rhyme says what? The rhyme says, pampered no doubt in expensive surrounds. Figure the cost, it's quite a few pounds. There you go. That's number two. Ladies and gentlemen, Anne and Sarah, the Flaming Hamsters. Take Thank care, you. loves. All the best. Mm. 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 <laughs> Take care. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Now, what about that? Any idea on that one? Expensive surrounds. Yes. Mm. What? <laughs> Nothing. Just two words you remembered. Expensive <laughs> surrounds. Nothing? I haven't got a clue. 
Okay, mm. one more on the table, then you've got to make up Finish. your mind. What are you going to reject if you get through? So, act number three, and it's our resident dancers. Great routines this week, as always. Two numbers from Frankie Goes to Hollywood, War and Two Tribes. Welcome the Brian Rogers Connection. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm, I'm almost afraid to ask what you're going to leave as the clue here. <laughs> well, <laughs> what are you going to leave us? It's a timeshare brochure. Oh, there it is. There you are. That's the clue this time. Oh, already they're looking at that rather, <laughs> rather intriguingly. And what does their rhyme say? Right. Once you're booked, you're off and away, maybe Capri and a small empty bay. That's the third one on the table tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Rapper of the Brian Rogers Connection. Thank you. Take care, Brian. All the best. All the best. Bye bye. Now then. Ah, yes. Tony's a bit sort of a... What do you think on that one? Holiday. Holiday, <laughs> yes. All good. How about yeah, you, folks? Timeshare holiday, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a bit yeah. obvious. Bit Isn't it? They're all <laughs> a bit obvious and devious, too. Well, we have three on the table. You've just heard that from Radford. I can read the other two again. Item number one came in, of course, from Kate of Rondo Veneziano. She brought in the box of tearaways and said, they, they both sure can go. Of each could be said, but the family model is just ahead. That was the first one. The farmhouse loaf came in item number two from Anne and Sarah of the Flaming Hamsters. They said, pampered no doubt in expensive surrounds. Figure the cost, it's quite a few pounds. There you are. Oh, oh yeah, when you hear them again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's going to go, folks? The bread. Harvey? The bread. Jackie, yes? You want to get rid of the bread if you get through? Is that all right? Yes. Unanimous? How about Tony and Margaret? What do you say? <laughs> she gives it straight to you, Tony. I think the brochure. You think the brochure? Yeah. 
Tony does. Is that all right for you, Margaret? That'll do. That'll <laughs> do for me, Jimmy, she says. Right. Is that all right? Yes. OK, you get rid of the brochure if you get through, and you get rid of the farmhouse loaf if you get through. The elimination question, which is here, so please put your hands beside that buzzer, the pair of you, not over, right? I'm going to start to read the question. When you think you know the answer, hit the buzzer and answer. If you're wrong, I will offer it to the other couple, all right? So they get a chance to sneak it away from you. Here's the question. Good luck to you. This famous English actor began his career as a song and dance man, he starred in the Quatermass series on television. OK, Tony's gone for it. Is it Anthony McQuill? Uh, no, it's not. I can offer that to Harvey. Got a chance to go here. Harvey and Jackie. Want to take a chance? Or do you want me to read more? <laughs> it's a free chance. No, you don't have read to. Read some more. Read some more, all right. Here we go again. He won an Oscar for his performance. Hello, you've gone for it straight away. Who is it? Orson Welles. No, that's also wrong, so I can now... Offer it here. Yes, I can offer John it here. Mills. John Mills is right, John Tony. Mills. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, you're right. Wonderful. Oh, my. Yes. Yes, a terrific performance he gave in that, of course. And I actually was at his house a, a few months ago, and I saw that famous Oscar. To hold that in your hand is rather something. Marvellous man, a great actor, and congratulations to you. Unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to Harvey and Jackie, but Janie's here with the money you won in the quiz, which was how much? £120, Tony. £120 they won. Thank and the ceramic dusty bin. And if you take a look across there at Linda Lee Lewis, she has for you the consolation prize. It's a marvellous portable compact disc player with its own shoulder-carrying strap to give you music wherever you go. Look at that. <laughs> so, Harvey, all the best. Kiss a kiss. Give them a round of applause, folks. Thanks very much for being lovely people. Good for you, thanks, eh? You've got through to this part of the show where all the big prizes and dusty bin is. You've rejected, of course, the timeshare brochure. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes to see exactly what that is. Good luck. <laughs> Three or three, two, one, and we've got Tony and Margaret from Krenak in Scotland got through to this part of the show, and you rejected the timeshare brochure. Yeah, have you had any thoughts of it in the break? What it could be? Still think it's, still think it's the bin. You still think it's the bin? Well, let's hope for you. So. Okay, the timeshare brochure brought in from Bradford Quist of the Brian Rogers Connection, who said, "Once you are booked, you are off and away. Maybe Capri and a small empty bay." Yeah, here we go. Radford brought you in the timeshare brochure. Once you are booked, you are off and away. Well, that might start you thinking of a holiday, coupled with the clue object there, the timeshare brochure. But you are booked could also suggest you have, having overstayed your fair share of time, leading to maybe Capri and a small empty bay. Well, in this case, Capri is not the place, but the thing. And the empty bay is because you have been towed away. It's the car, yes! <laughs> Yes, not exactly Dusty Binner. Huh? Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> what a shame. And that's the first one tonight. All we've got to try and think about is getting rid of him. However, the star prize, but never mind that we do have some good ones to go through yet. We're going to go on and have act number four. Here's a young lady who had a big hit in that great musical, Mutiny, in the West End. Was there for a long, long time. Tonight, she's had her, got her own dancers with her with her new record called Toy Boy. So will you welcome Sunita?
Hello, Serena. How are you? Good to see you again. I, I said that was a number from your, you know, your new album, and you're on That's tour right. right now, yes? That's right. Uh -huh. How's it going? All right? Really well. How, how long are you on tour for this time? Oh, gosh. We've been touring on and off for the last eight months. There you are, you see. That's, that's some schedule. <laughs> what are you going to leave these folks here as the clue? Okay, the clue is a batch of folders. Okay, that's the clue this time. A batch of folders, and the rhyme says what? And the rhyme is, your family's no longer walking the streets, but viewing the scene from soft leather seats. There you are. <laughs> that is number four. Ladies and gentlemen, Sunita. All the best, folks. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Now then, Margaret, Tony, what do you think about that? Apart from not much. <laughs> not much. Well, that's not the car. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the car. Unfortunately, that would have to go, wouldn't it? Um, uh, it doesn't matter what you think about it. If you want to refresh your memory on one of the other two, I can read one of those two again. This one. You want to hear the farmhouse loaf? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was brought in, of course, by Anne and Sarah. As they said, pampered, no doubt, in expensive surrounds. Figure the cost, it's quite a few pounds. Yeah, now, is the bin here yet? Do we know? Could be. There's one more to come yet, of course. But one's got to be rejected this time. What do you want to get rid of? Probably holder this time. Don't whisper to her, Tony. You can all hear. We'll get rid of this one. Oh, Jack. Really? She looks straight at me then, Margaret, and says, we'll get rid of this. Is that all right with you, Tony? Yeah, I'm not arguing. He's not going to argue with that. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Want to get rid of that? Yeah, You don't fancy it? No. All right. So, I haven't opened it yet, but you want to get rid of it? Yes. Okay. Kate. Brought this in, of course, from Rondo Veneziano, a box of tearaways. She said, they both sure can go of each could be said, but the family model is just a hair. So, what have we got for you this time? They both can go of each could be said. That could suggest something to do with cars. Maybe not with that one going like that. The clue object here was a box of tearaways, which, after use, are discarded and become outcasts. But the family model is just a head. Well, there are two things which are outcasts on 3 to one each week. There's the small ceramic bin and the family size model dusty bin. You've done it. <laughs> oh. Okay, you scallywags. Off you go. Thank goodness for that, Margaret. Oh, dear, Tony, you got us going there. You lost the star prize, the car, straight away, which must have made you feel a bit sad, right? Yeah. No, I felt the same for you. But at least you got rid of that scoundrel, which means a good prize goes home with you tonight. We're going to have now item number five. And it's great to welcome back on our show some characters who are great rebel rousers wherever they go. Here with a special version of Hometown, George Melly and John Chilton's Feet Warmers. <laughs> Cousins of mine, hometown, where they get up in the morning, and they're all so busy yawning. I'll get a welcome from those corny country cousins of mine. There's an old schoolhouse door. We used to tumble through it for And there's a small candy store Where you could eat a dozen lollipops and shop for more Hometown Where the garden trees are shaded That's where Edith was the lady I'm going back to treat those corny country cousins of mine.
schoolhouse door We used to tumble through and fall And there's a small candy store Where you could eat a dozen lollipops And shout for more Hometown Where the garden trees are shaded That's where Edie was a lady I'm going back to greet those corny country cousins of mine I'm going back It's a little heavy. Yeah. In great voice and great style as always, you characters. Thank you. And I know you're on the road. You're always on the road. You tour more than anybody I know. You really do tour. Yes, we do. Uh, we do about 16 jobs a month. Uh -huh. Uh, of course, it's cheaper now because I've got that uh, rail, rail pass. Not third <laughs> oh, <on>. No, you're <laughs> owning up to that as well. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. And you're at Ronnie Scott's, I hear, at Christmas again. Yes, That's 14th year running. Is it really? I was a young lad when I went in there, there first. Fabulous. It's a marvellous yeah. place and it's great to have you on the show again. And this is their clue. What is that apart it's from... It's an the... apple strudel. An apple strudel? They say. I haven't sampled it. Well, it looks as though uh, somebody somewhere might, but not right now. What about the rhyme? What does the rhyme say? The rhyme says... Family days on which father can count to deliver the sermon on the mount. Yeah. That's the last one tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, George Melly. Thank you so much, George. Good luck at Ronnie Scott's. Thanks a million. Thank you. George Melly. Lovely. So, Margaret and Tony, how about that one? Seven in the mouth, something that sounds religious. <laughs> yeah, very religious, yeah. yes. Maybe a holiday, maybe. Seven on the mount, apple strudel on the mount, Switzerland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they're thinking rather nicely now, being very quiet about it, keeping it to themselves. But uh, I can read one of the other two again. Would you like to hear one of these two again? The folders. The folders. Yes, okay. Yes. That was uh, item number four, it came in from Sunita. She said, Your family's no longer walking the streets, but viewing the scene from soft leather seats. So. Yeah. Three are on the table, the final three. Bin's gone. There's a buzz in the mm. audience there. And uh, one's got to be rejected right now. What is it? This sounds like furniture. This sounds like a farm. Uh, yeah. We'll, yeah. yeah. We'll we'll reading a few pounds. And it's a yeah. farmhouse. That sounds like furniture. That sounds like a health farm. So what one's going to go? Could I do this one? You don't fancy the health farm. Don't need that. You don't need it. <laughs> OK, so you're rejecting then the farmhouse loaf, which came in from the Flaming Hamsters and said, pampered no doubt in expensive surrounds. Figure the cost. It's quite a few pounds. Pampered, no doubt, in expensive surrounds. Well, that obviously suggests going somewhere where you'll be made a fuss of. And the clue object was a farmhouse loaf, which could start you thinking of a farmhouse with food connections. Figure the cost, it's quite a few pounds. Well, the clue here is figure. You're right, your figure, which at the end of your stay should have lost quite a few pounds because it was a health farm. Take a look at this. <laughs> Yes, you'd have got the best of attention over four glorious days at one of Britain's most famous health hydros. Arriving by chauffeur-driven car, you'd have stayed in a luxurious suite of rooms and your visit would have included three different kinds of massage, which means that all-important facial. And you could have enjoyed the many facilities of the hydro, including tennis, swimming, clay pigeon shooting, squash and golf. You could have lost pounds and it wouldn't have cost you a penny. There you are. <laughs> Not a penny, but it's gone. Thank you, John Benson. And I don't think you could... You, can, you can't lose any more pounds. You're thin enough. Anyway, it's quite a good prize, I must say, as always. Very good. We're on the final two now, of course. And being the final two, I can read them both again. So good luck on this one. Sunita brought in the batch of folders and she said, Your family's no longer walking the streets, but viewing the scene from soft leather seats, is what she said. George Melly brought you in. Item number five, the apple strudel, and said, family days on which father can count to deliver the sermon on the mount. So, there you are. Good prizes there for you. The bin has gone. Uh, and some other great prizes and the car. So, what are you going to do, Tony? What does Margaret think? Uh, I don't think that's Switzerland. You don't? Oh, you did a few minutes ago. You don't now? I don't know. <laughs> no? Do 
of mine. What about Margaret? This, what do you say? I, I think this this seems like leather furniture. Leather, leather yeah. something. Leather, leather something. furniture, maybe leather. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, there was a mention of that there, yeah, yeah but it's uh, it's up to you. you know, what do you do? Strudel's going. Strudel's going to go? Yeah. That's, oh, no for them. Is that all right with you, Margaret? Yes. Yes, Margaret says. You're rejecting that. Then the apple strudel, which came in from George Melly, family days on which father can count to deliver the sermon on the mount, is what George said. Family days on which father can count. That'll probably start you thinking... Something to do with the weekend, when most fathers can count on being with their families, but it's even better than that, which leads to, to deliver the Sermon on the Mount, the clue object was apple strudel, which, of course, near Switzerland, suggests Austria. Austria. Yeah, and the mount you would have been delivering your sermon from, one of the mountains on the Austrian Tyrol. Have a look at this. Yes, this would have been a break with the difference. A holiday for the whole family, right at the foot of the 7,600-foot-high Adalpi mountain in Austria. That would have been the location of your hotel, and it's part of the relaxed, unharried lifestyle of the local village where the picturesque buildings have remained unchanged for many decades. A gondola ride to the top of the mountain was included, so were excursions to other parts of the Tyrol. So you would have returned full of fresh air and good living. Oh dear, yes. There you are. That really did look something, didn't it? Would yeah. you like that? Well, do you want that? <laughs> well, it's been rejected. It's got to go. Here's the prize you're going home with. I've got to put that on the floor. This is the one you stuck with, of course, and uh, it was brought in from Sunita. She brought in a batch of folders and said, your family's no longer walking the streets, but viewing the scene from soft leather seats, is what she said. Your family's no longer walking the streets. Well, that could suggest that you're relaxing, taking it easy somewhere inside, or it might start you thinking of some kind of transport. The viewing, viewing the scene from soft leather seats. The clue object was a batch of folders, and that's the type of transport you have won. It's folding bicycles for the whole family. Have a look at this. Yes, the whole family can take to the road with these good-looking bicycles. For Mum and Dad, two specially designed lightweight folding models that each weigh only 20 pounds, and can easily be assembled in only 45 seconds. And for the kids, junior models specially built for both safety and speed. Just think of the petrol money you're going to save. Indeed. So let's go and get your prize. Come on, Margaret, tell me this way. Come on. OK, Margaret and Tony, there you go. There you are. Well, the family are going to be thrilled with this, I know. You know, those children are going to really love this. Remember, of course, you've got the money you want in a quiz. Linda has that. What they win, Linda? £630. £630? <laughs> Marvellous. All the best to you. Margaret, take care. Have a lot of fun. Tony, thanks so much for being great contestants. And thank you, as always, at home for watching. Till we see you next week, take care. Have a wonderful week. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>